What is up people? And today I got some really good news. I got this email. Welcome to GitHub Actions. So I've got a invite to the Actions beta. So today we're going to look at compiling and deploying my website, um, mostly using GitHub Actions. Uh, and I want to give you guys a brief overview of GitHub Actions, what it's all about, um, so you can get an idea um, how you can use it to automate your workflows. So let's get started. <laughs> So GitHub Actions is not only for build and deployment pipelines, but the word actions is like so vague that you can literally use your imagination and come up with a lot of automation ideas for your workflow. Automate your workflow from idea to production. So GitHub Actions makes it easy to automate all your software workflows with world-class CI/CD. Um, so you can build deployment pipelines and literally automate most of your workflows. So some of the things you can do, automate your workflow using GitHub Actions. So you can configure a workflow, uh, manage the workflow run, so you can schedule like how you want the workflows to run. Um, we're gonna go through some of the syntax and the events that trigger the workflow. So you can do this like on commit. So when you commit some code to a specific branch, you can have an event run or you can just use a cron job or some sort of schedule. Um, but this one is a cool, the coolest part is like you can pick a virtual environment. So this is like a serverless build or serverless environment where you just define in a YAML file what you need. So you can pick like a Windows box to run a PowerShell script or a Linux box and you can even have like a Docker um, build, uh, Docker host. So my website is made up of a, a few microservices and I wanted to go into this quite blindly without reading too much documentation to kind of see how easy it is to port my workload over to GitHub Actions and compile my um, website and deploy it. So this is one of the microservices that I have and notice here there's an actions section. So if I go ahead and click on that, um, you can see get started with GitHub Actions and this is very useful. It's a very useful introduction because they show you how to do a simple workflow. You can just go ahead and click that. Um, there's Node.js, there's Rust, Python and there's also like automate steps of your process. So if you want to greet someone who's a first time contributor you can set up this workflow there's some labeling um, auto labelers that you can use and also like when an issue is stale so there's a bunch of components that you can plug together in your in your um, workflow and we'll get to that in a bit so i'm gonna go ahead and click this button set up a workflow myself i want to see how easy it is to set it up and that generates this yaml file here um, under .github slash workflows. And if we look at it, it's pretty self-explanatory from what I can um, see here. Um, we have a name for the job, for, for, the, for the workflow, and we do this on push. So if you look to the right here, we can follow the documentation. They describe um, that you can have a bunch of events on which you wanna trigger this. So in my example, I'm just gonna use master. So when I push my code into master branch, so I'm gonna be using this one here. Um, you can also use pull requests. So if there's a pull request for the for the repo, um, it can trigger a workflow. You can also use a schedule um, if you want to use like a cron schedule. So next up, we also have the section which is runs on Ubuntu later. So I pick an Ubuntu uh, virtual environment that I want to run on. Now there's a bunch of available virtual machine types. So you can choose Windows, Linux or Mac OS. You can even go down to some of the versions that they support. Now the documentation is pretty cool. You can dig down into virtual environments and you can see like if you want to use Node.js, um, you can use like npm install and you can run your node projects on this. But in, for my um, purpose, I'm just going to use Ubuntu latest because I don't really care uh, about the version of the operating system. Um, I just need a Linux machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Then we look at steps. Now this blew my mind. You can have steps that this uses, like it uses a bunch of like uh, components, let's say. Now, I first wondered what this was. So I went to GitHub slash actions and this page here. And I noticed that this is an organization called GitHub Actions and it has 43 re repositories. And one of the repositories is called Checkout. And if I go into that, what does that do? So this literally does um, the equivalence of a git fetch and git commit. So it pulls your code basically. So this is just a component that does a git checkout for you. 
And that made me, uh, blew my mind because I was like, okay, so I can plug in any public re repo here and that's the version. So I want to pull V1 of this repo. And so this shows you how pluggable and flexible this is because I saw some examples of like, if you want to automate someone checking into master and you want to automatically create a release out of it, there are components that um, allow you to cr automatically create a release. Um, so there's like all these things you can just plug in here. I'm going to use checkout and then you can see here that um, you give it a name and you run here just echo hello world. I'm going to get rid of that. And what I did was I was interested in the multi line because I just want to run a bit of shell. And to test this, I just went and I said Alice um, LS minus L and I saved it. And literally that just prints out all the files. So this does a successful checkout, prints out all my files. And I was like, damn, that was super quick. And the next discovery I made was I, I got rid of this and I just said docker build. And I said dot and I said dash test. And I found out that this virtual environment actually has docker running on it. And that like blew my mind because now I can do a Docker build because all my microservices are Docker containers. So I've um, successfully, I spent a little bit of time and successfully set up a, a build for one of my microservices, the content microservice. And I want to run through this quickly. So you can see I have my event here that says on push on master. So whenever I push to master, I want this job to run and I want it to run on Ubuntu latest. I wanted to run this checkout uh, module and i'm just going to call it build and this is cool this is environment variables that um, github allows you to inject and the other cool thing is it allows you to inject secrets so i have docker hub and docker hub key and if you head over to settings and you head over to secrets you can see that i've defined secrets here so you can define these secrets which are encrypted um, and they get injected into your actions so this means I don't have to check in any sensitive info into GitHub directly. I can encrypt it as part of settings and it gets injected using the syntax. And that allows me to use these environment variables down in this um, script here. So I do ls minus L to list out all the files, make sure everything's there. Then I do Docker login, um, pass in my um, the credentials to do a login to Docker Hub. And then I build my image and I'm just building it as a latest tag. Um, because I don't really care about what version I'm running. And the um, thing I do next is I just say Docker push. So I do my build and push and push my container image to the registry. Now I want to show you guys this is going to happen really fast. I want to show you guys I'm going to commit this work um, workflow, which is automatically because I've defined on push, it's going to kick off a build and that's going to push the container image to my to my registry. Now my website is deployed onto Kubernetes. So if I do a kubectl get pods, I can show you here that I'm running, um, this microservice has been running for the last 18 hours. So now I'm gonna go over here, back to my actions and I'm gonna start a commit. And I'm going to commit this directly into master branch. Then I'm gonna head over to actions and notice that a build has been kicked off. And if I click into that, starting my workflow run, it is really quick. Sets up a job. It does the action checkout, it checks out all my code. It ran Alice, it started Docker login, it started Docker build. It's starting to push and it's done. It's completed. Look at that. So if I do get pods, it created my started creating my new containers. If I just go ahead and refresh that, you can see my new change is automatically being rolled out. So there you go. You can now see my containers are now running. They've been running for 20 seconds. So I've, my new change is pretty much out. Now you're probably wondering, how did I deploy that automatically? So I did the build and the push as part of GitHub Actions, um, but now the change is there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is another product called Keel. If you head over to keel.sh, Keel is a Kubernetes operator to automate Helm, daemon set, stateful set, and deployment um, updates. So you can literally, you drop this into your cluster. Um, Keel will then monitor your registry for any new Docker images that come to your registry. So because GitHub action has pushed to the registry, 
um, Keel has picked it up and automatically rolled out the new version. And Keel does this det detection because it has a policy. If we take a look at my deployment YAML, um, this is my deployment YAML for that content service. Notice that I have a bunch of triggers. I have a poll trigger. Um, so Keel runs in the cluster, it polls every minute and does a force update when it matches the, the tag. So because I'm using a constant tag of latest, uh, Keel will just pull that look at the, um, the the hash of the Docker image. If it's different, it'll pull it and deploy it. So this is a very simple automatic CI CD um, pipeline for Kubernetes. Now, if you're uh, an organization that wants version control, I recommend look at their um, policies for Semver versioning that will allow you to deploy based on uh, minor, major uh, Semver version um, changes. So this was super easy. It literally took me like only a few minutes to get this up and running, to understand that the documentation is super awesome. The user interface is really simple, really easy to use. And I was able to get myself a serverless build pipeline up and running with ease. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, head over to GitHub Actions, check it out, hit the like button, subscribe, and until next time, peace. So you are keep it on it. I ain't just a young and I'm a boss girl. Got it on lock and I'm a blue.